I got a job. Don't know why I'm saying it like that, it's really weird. Hi, I'm Julia. I am a PhD student who studies neuroscience and I am now officially a science communicator. Yes, I got myself a post PhD job. Now I actually haven't properly finished my PhD yet. I have to hand in my thesis. I'm still awaiting some feedback on that. And then I have to do my exam, which will be hopefully in a few months time. And once I've done all of those things, I'll be bringing you some videos on that entire process, the hand in process, how I'm preparing for my exam and all of that sort of stuff. But but in the meantime, my funding for my thesis ran out in March, to so the end of March this year, I had no more funding for my thesis. And I was like, yeah, yeah, can't really live if I don't have money. So I decided to get myself a job and just, you know, how these things work. An amazing job opportunity came up for me in December, 2020. And I interviewed for that job then, and I got it. So I started my new science communication job at the end of March as my PhD funding ran out. So now I'm working full time in science communication and I'm gonna have to finish my thesis, which will be lots of fun, I'm sure. So my job in science communication is at Alzheimer's Society. This is one of the biggest Alzheimer's disease charities in the UK, dementia research charities in the UK. And my role there is as a research communications officer, which is a role where I go and translate all of the really cool research that we fund about dementia into everyday conversation. So today I thought I would answer some of your questions about my new job in science communication. I asked on my Instagram any questions you might have about science communication jobs in general, my experience applying for post PhD jobs and then also other PhD job related questions. So let's get to them. So my first question was apart from academic positions what are different jobs one can do post PhD? Well I'm doing a job which isn't in academia. I am doing a role in science communication. But aside from science communication, there are a plethora of jobs you can do with a PhD. I made a video on jobs that you can do with a neuroscience degree, but all of these also apply to having a life sciences based PhD as well. So you could go into jobs in science policy, for example, go and work for the government. And I think the past year has shown how important this type of role is in our government. You could also go into science journalism, you could go into industry and work in that type of environment. There are so many jobs available than just academia. So if you're doing a PhD and you feel a bit like you're on a linear track to academia and don't feel like you really want to do that but can't see other options, I definitely recommend checking out my previous video. I also got asked, when did you decide you wanted to do SciComm after your PhD? I decided that I wanted to do science communication in maybe 2019, I think 2019. I didn't realize science communication was actually a job. I started my PhD with the intention of probably staying in academia and doing research. But then I wanted to like talk more about neuroscience to the general public, started my Instagram account. And from there met loads of other PhD students who were doing a similar thing, scientists who were doing a similar thing, and then also pure science communicators whose whole job is to talk about science and make science really fun and entertaining and informative and accurate. So once I found out science communication was a career, I was like, ah, this is quite interesting because I love to talk about science and I'm getting my degree in an area of science which I'm really passionate about which is neuroscience and Alzheimer's disease in particular and I thought it would be really great to be able to like combine all of the knowledge I've built up over the years about the brain and about diseases of the brain and use that knowledge and my love of talking to people bring those together and have that as a career and that actually does exist. So I say about two years into my four year PhD program, I realized that I wanted to do science communication as my job instead of sticking with the academic route. What's the average salary in science communication? I think it really varies. I can only speak from my own experience that my salary for science communication 
is much better than my PhD stipend. So that's good. And I think probably what I'm getting paid is similar to what you get paid as a postdoc maybe a little bit less but with science communication like any job you start at the you know sort of bottom of a chain where you could go quite high my role at the minute is a research communications officer but from that role you could go all the way to being you know head of communications at a charity you can obviously climb the ladder and with that you get more salary and yeah i think like any job you over time will make more money but a full-time science communication job is well paid and definitely you can live very very comfortably on that salary i got so many questions about where i actually found my job and if you are in the uk and you want to do science communication sign up to the SciCom mailing list this is where i found my job it is a mailing list where all of the science communication jobs in the uk are collated put together and you get email alerts about these different jobs and every day in my inbox i get a few alerts about different science communication jobs and i think it's really nice to get them all in this sort of format rather than trying to find them yourself because when i try to find them myself they're sort of dotted all over the place whereas i would just check my inbox each day and then if a job came up that i wanted i'd be like yes I'm gonna apply for that. So if you're interested in science communication, I would definitely recommend joining that mailing list. So I got asked, how do I feel about not being a student anymore after being in academia for so long? It feels weird. It feels weird, but it feels good. I have been a student for eight and a half years. So that's from my undergrad all the way through to my PhD. And I thought it was gonna be really hard to adapt because as a student, you have more free time in the sense of your time isn't as rigidly scheduled. And I thought that was gonna be really hard for me to adjust to having like a nine to five job and not having that flexibility to plan my own hours. But I've actually found having the nine to five sort of, you have to work in these hours and then around that is your time. I actually quite like that. It like gives me structure and I know when I'm expected to be working and when I'm expected to be not working and chilling. Whereas with my PhD, I would easily work really, really, really long days because there wasn't that, these are your set hours to work. So in terms of that aspect of like managing time, I actually am preferring my job now. I've only been in it for like four weeks. So ask me in a few months time and I might be like, oh i miss the phd life so yeah i think after eight and a half years i feel like the time to be a student for me had come to an end and i was ready to not be a student anymore even though i will really miss student discount student discount yeah that that's sad did i feel bad about not staying in academia and how did my supervisor take it i didn't feel bad but yeah, I think I understand why someone might feel bad because there is, you know, this sort of expectation, which I think is sometimes external and sometimes it's like an undercurrent that you pick up on that supervisors would like their students to stay in academia because, you know, they're at the end of the day, they're your mentor, you've worked for them for a long time and if they can see your potential in the field, and then you say to them, I'm not going to stay in the field, then yeah, it can feel probably a bit like, oh, that's a shame. But I didn't feel bad because I knew what I wanted to do. And I love research. I love research, but I love science communication more. And I think this is something which I was struggling with for a while because I was trying to do like what don't I like about research and what don't I like about science communication, you know, like a pros and cons list. And what actually helped more for me was to do a pros and pros list. So write all the pros about me staying in research, all the pros about me moving on to science communication. And from that, there were more pros to the science communication side of things. So it made my decision much easier. I think a nice thing to do is think about your life in five years time. Where do you want to be in five years time? And not just where do you want to be in your career, but what do you want your day-to-day -day life to look like? And for me, I wanted to have more freedom in what I do and my own time. And I was like, I love research and I love being in the lab, but if I stick to that career path in five years time, I'm still gonna be 
in the lab doing that type of work or maybe more a managerial role in the lab but I was like it won't give me that freedom that I actually would quite like in about five years time so that as well is a good way to think about which decision to make is just think what would you love your ideal day to be in five years time that really helped me and i didn't feel bad breaking the news to my supervisor i think my supervisors are really supportive of me and want me to be happy and when i said i want to do science communication they were like yeah that really suits you so i didn't have a supervisor who put any sort of like expectation on me of like we need you to do this and we want you to do that they were very, very open and very supportive of what I wanted to do. What I did to transition from PhD to science communication was start doing science communication before I finished my PhD. So I started doing science communication in June 2018. June 2018, I started doing science communication on Instagram. From there, I've now branched out to YouTube, TikTok. I write blogs for other people. I've done all sorts of really cool science communication jobs, all from starting that one Instagram account. And I think for me, having that on my CV alongside my PhD, that is what the people at my job interview found really impressive, was that not only do I have the scientific knowledge, which is needed for science communication, but I've already been proactive and gone and done science communication and have examples of my passion for science communication. So if you want to transition, from a PhD into science communication. Just try and do some little things during your PhD program, which will enable you to show that you really love science communication. That could be teaching an undergraduate class. It could be teaching in schools in your area, which is something that I did. I taught neuroscience to secondary schools, children. You could ask to write blog posts to your university website. You could reach out to magazines to write feature pieces. You could start your own social media platform where you communicate science. You can make videos on the science topics you're interested in. And all of this should be because you love to do it. And I say that if you really enjoy science communication, doing these things on the side and giving up some of your very precious free time as a PhD student, because it does take over a bit, but giving up some of that time shouldn't feel too much of a drag because if you love science communication, you will enjoy doing those things. And I would say, you know, if you don't enjoy it, then maybe don't do it. But yeah, for me, definitely it was having that science communication portfolio already sort of built up when I went for my science communication job. How did I decide to exit academia? I'm nervous about the other side. Yeah, I was nervous about the other side as well because I thought that once I was on this PhD path track that I would be staying in academia. I thought it was like the natural progression and I didn't really realise until I started the PhD and saw other people, you know, graduate and go on to different careers that that was really an option for me. So it was a bit nerve wracking because I felt like I was going against the path that I'd already set myself, but that is not the case. Once you're on a PhD programme, you know, the destination is not final. You can pick where you want to go. I think for every post PhD job, it's up to you as an individual, what you want to do. Try to not be swayed by what others around you think you should do. Go after what will make you happiest and what you want to do every single day. I felt for a time that I had to stick with academia and there was a good six months or so where I sort of knew in my head I wanted to do science communication, but I was scared to say that out loud and I sort of, was going, no, 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 you're not gonna do that. You're gonna stick with academia. You're gonna go into a postdoc, you know, you're gonna aim for that sort of career. And all of a sudden I was like, ah, oh, I, I wanna do something else more. So why, why should I just follow the path that I think I've already set for myself? So yeah, I completely understand being nervous, but if you have, you know, an inkling of something else you wanna do, explore it, try it out and see if it is a good fit for you. The correct time to look for jobs post PhD. For me, I signed up to the SciComm mailing list back in March, 2020. And I'd said to myself, I'm not gonna apply for any jobs until after Christmas, 2020, because I had this extension from pandemic, etc. So I had some time and I was like, right, if any jobs come up in the next nine months that I really, really love, like I really would love to have that job, I will apply for it. In those nine months, 
three jobs came up and I applied for all three of them. Two, I was hugely underqualified for. They were like social media manager at a huge, huge science magazine, which yeah, obviously I've never managed social media in my life. And the other job was science journalism, but they had on there that you had to have worked, you know, in an actual role, right in science, like as a journalist before. So I didn't have the prerequisites, but I just thought I'll apply for them anyway, because you never know. And then the third one that came up was the job that I got that came up in December. So just before I was actively going to start looking for jobs, this one came up. I had the interview on the 17th of December, got it the next day and then was like, great, I'll start in March. So that was my, you know, plan. But I was very happy to finish my PhD and not go straight into a job I had that in my head of like if I have to take you know three or four months after my funding finishes and live at home and not have a job for a little bit of time I was prepared for that but if you want to go straight into a job post PhD I'd say probably give yourself about five or six months to start actively looking for a job. So what does my job entail? So my job is a research communications officer at Alzheimer's Society, which is one of the UK's leading dementia research charities. And my job is to take all of the cool research that we fund, we fund a lot of dementia research and communicate that to the public. So I'm reading all of the hard science, making that understandable and getting it out there on blogs, social media posts. And then also I'm doing a lot of internal communication within the charity to make sure everyone who works for us knows about the cool research that we're doing. My job is a nine to five sort of job and I work, yeah, office hours, but it's all work from home, which is great because my job is based in London, which is where I live. But you know, my family are in one location, my partner lives in another location. So it means I can sort of pick up and go if I need to go and stay with any of them you know, once COVID is done. I really love the freedom of having a work from home job as well. So it was just, yes, perfect combination. The interview process was great, actually. I had half an hour to write a blog post for the general public about quite a hard science topic. And then I had an hour long interview. I made a video in like January about how to prepare for interviews because at that point I already knew I had this job. So I was like, I wanna write about the interview and like how I, I got the job, but without saying I had the job because I hadn't told anyone else I had the job except my family and friends and my supervisors. So if you check out this video, if you have an interview, that should hopefully help you. After I got my job, was it easier to write my thesis? Yes, I think so, because I knew I had something, I had a deadline because I was like, I have to start my job mid-March and I want to have my thesis done by then. So I felt like having that pressure of like a deadline helped me write my thesis. And also I felt quite motivated too, because I knew I was going into a job, the end was in sight. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like I've researched Alzheimer's disease and now I'm gonna go and be a research communications officer about Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, it just felt nice. So for me, it was easier to write my thesis once I knew I had a job. And thank you all so much for your congratulations. Honestly, like everyone's been so, so kind about the job and I'm really excited to share more about working in science communication. I also have quite cool side projects going on like outside of my actual day job of science communication, my night job of science communication, which I will be keeping everyone updated with on this channel and on my social medias as well. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope I answered most of your questions. If you have any more, feel free to drop them below and I'll try my best to answer them either in a comment or maybe, maybe a future video. If you have any questions about science communication, I'm here to answer. If you want more neuroscience-based productivity and mindset tips or to learn more about your brain, then subscribe to the channel and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.